Welcome to my dad's car. Enjoy. Welcome to My Dad's Car, a podcast discussing our personal relationship with automotive nostalgia. And you know what? It doesn't even have to be about your dad's car. It can be your mum's, your grand's, your parents, guardians, or even a neighbour's. If it made an impression, let's talk about it. How are you? Alright. Yeah, not too bad, yeah. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. Hi Helen. Hello, Helen. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, we're good, thank you. I'm Andy, and this is John. Nice to meet you. Nice to kind of meet you. I mean, I feel like we need a new word for this, don't we? That where you're not actually meeting someone, it's just technology. But yeah, nice to meet you over Zoom. Sometimes people say e meet, don't they, on emails, which I find quite a nasty term, actually. But... Yeah, it's a bit annoying, <laughs> isn't it? We'll yeah. come up with something better. Yeah. I was wondering about blending the words Zoom and meet, but I'm not sure kind of how that zeet. Zeet? I think that's a hair removal cream, isn't it? Sounds a bit like it. Or moom. <laughs> <laughs> meet, moom. Don't know. It needs a bit of work, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Come back to that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, no, thank you for inviting me. It's really nice of you to invite me on. Um, yeah, for the benefit of the tape, really, I reached out to you about coming onto the podcast. Turns out you're friends with a friend of mine, Kelly, who's involved in the um, Max Power reunion scene. Yeah, she built kind of show cars and stuff back in the day. And I thought I would... Um, yeah, send you a little message and see what your story was. And it turns out you kind of blame your dad for it all. Yeah, exactly. Funny that. So yeah, Kelly's wonderful. I love her to bits. I've met her kind of, yeah, through Max Power, really, and through social media. And yeah, she's uh, she's fab. And uh, yeah, my dad is responsible for my petrol hedonism. Although I think it, I was born with it, but I think he kind of made it worse or better. You know? And I guess, yeah, a quick background for those who kind of aren't aware of what you get up to. These days you've got a podcast, haven't you? Yes. Cars of the Macabre, is it called? That's correct. Yeah, well done, first time. Yeah, so I do that with my cousin Alison and it's a true crime and paranormal podcast and then the link throughout is cars. Yeah. So it's a bit, it's kind of a very sort of, um, I wouldn't say a weak link, that's the wrong word, but it doesn't govern the stories. It's just, you know, for example, one of our episodes was about the Waco siege and David Koresh's Camaro, which used to be at a museum in Vegas, so that's quite a good link. And uh, haunted roads, spooky roads, things like that. So it generally is paranormal and true crime, and then the fact that it's just got cars to link it all together. Nice. Super. And then in your spare time, I guess in inverted commas, you've done some TV stuff and you do a bit of art as well. Yeah, so I do art full time now. Cool. And I've done, yeah, I've done quite a few TV series. I did Goblin Works Garage, which was on discovery and quest yeah and i also did a series called i'm not driving that for bbc iplayer okay which was loosely i can describe it as a custom car show it was sort of customizing cars for first-time drivers and a i also did motor pickers yeah yeah. a show with paul cowland which was basically helping people buy cars because there's so much choice out there they don't know where to start um and then also I did a series called World's Greatest Cars. So we basically all argued with each other about what were the World's Greatest Cars. So it was, it was good, really. Just told to argue, which was fab. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if we jump into things, um, what's your earliest car memory or earliest motoring memory? So, as I mentioned, uh, my dad loves cars. And so it's probably one of the first things I can remember is playing with cars, playing with toy cars. And also James Bond, his cars. So I used to watch James Bond with my dad. Okay. And the thing I was most kind of drawn to was, you know, the amazing Bond cars. So that's probably playing with toy cars and watching Bond films with dad. That's probably what what started it. We talking Roger Moore or Connery or all of them? All of them. Yeah. Yeah, I love James Bond films. So, I mean, I specifically quite vividly remember the the Lotus that went underwater. Yeah. And I used to try and recreate that in the bath with a Lotus. <laughs> For some reason, that Lotus really kind of stuck with me. And, and yeah, I, yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. They did some nice toys, didn't they, like the Bond ones? Mm. I seem to remember like a white Lotus where like the sides kind of popped out and everything. 
Yeah. And I did have the Aston Martin where you pressed a button and some guns popped out and then a screen popped up at the back, which was kind of like bulletproof. And yeah, that was great. I mean, I I had Barbies as well, but Barbie always had a Ferrari. So (laughs) it always revolved around cars. Massively jumping ahead. Has the James Bond thing influenced your interest in custom cars? Uh, Possibly, because, you know, I mean, look at, like we said, the Lotus and the and the Aston Martin, they were customised, weren't they? So maybe subconsciously it did. Yeah, yeah. Generally, film, I, I love films. I love comics and computer games. So all that kind of amazing pop culture definitely has had and still does have a massive influence. Yeah. What do you remember as the first vehicle kind of travelling in? What, what were your parents driving back in the day? So my dad used to be a builder. He had his own building company. And so we used to go around in the van quite a lot. He used to love going in the van. Uh, the first one I remember was like a Fiat van. And then he had a Volkswagen transporter van after that as well. And then I remember him buying, which was the first car he let me drive so this is when i was 17 so that's moving forward a bit it was a three series bmw e30 no not e30 e36 sorry and while i was learning to drive he let me drive that and that gave me the bug for bmws so he's always had like a a cool work van and then he's always had like a nice car on the side to enjoy so that's a nice place to start yeah it is isn't it e36 isn't it yeah oh yeah definitely and and you know i was used to going in my fiesta my mark three fiesta which you know you you put your foot right to the floor and then about five minutes later it would go somewhere (laughs) and then all of a sudden i'm in this e36 and you know you put your foot down a little bit in comparison and it was like to me it was like a rocket ship and i was like right yeah okay (laughs) <laughs> got to set my sights on this for the future so was it a mark ii fiesta you say for your first car then it was a mark three fiesta mark three okay yeah limited edition sunray okay the only thing i can think of that was limited edition about it really was it had kind of a, a spoiler on the back had fog lamps on the front that didn't work <laughs> and it had some stickers on it that said sunray so that was the special edition of the car but it was very cool for a first car though what color was the sunray Yellow. No, it wasn't. It was this really cool metallic. Dark (laughs) grey. British special edition. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it should have been. No, it's a really nice metallic blue colour. Okay. Yeah, the dealer special edition, it's sort of a license to print money, wasn't it, really? They just kind of come up with a name like that. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a packet of stickers and a a new air freshener. We've got to get rid of this. (laughs) (laughs) Call it the Sunray. Yeah, that's there we go, Sunray. Yeah, it was brilliant. I I love that car. Um, and you, you know what it's like when you first start driving. It's your it's the first sense of proper freedom because, you know, you've obviously got your your room at your home and everything, but you've now got your car, which is all yours, and you can go anywhere in it. So very fond memories of that car. Did the Fiesta live a, a long life? Didn't do too badly. I had it for how long did I have? I had it for sort of like two three years, and then after that, I had one of the new Beetles when they were the new Beetle. Okay. With the flowers in the dash. Flower in the dash, yeah. It's yeah. a second-hand one, but it was a, it's only done 7,000 miles, so it was quite an upgrade from the Fiesta, which I think when I got rid of it, the starter motor had gone. And it was, you know, it was like, oh, it's going to need too much doing. So ended up upgrading to that, which was very nice. Did your mum drive as well? Yeah, mum drives as well, but she's not really into cars, not like me and my dad. What did she have growing up? If your dad was in a van and a BM? Uh, yeah, don't worry about kind of cool points here. We sort of, we enjoy kind of the weird, the wonderful. She's had pickup trucks as well. So we used to live in Sussex and we had horses and animals and things like that. So they were kind yeah. of, you know, like utility vehicles. So she had, I remember, um, oh God, I don't know what the model would have been called, but it was a Daihatsu 4x4. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then she, I know she's driven pickup trucks and things. I mean, they split up when I was quite young. So. Okay. It's yeah, they all have separate cars, but yeah, she's had a few pickup trucks. So she's got a really nice Volvo XC60 at the minute. So yeah, she doesn't do badly on cars. Doesn't care as much, but she, you know, she still has driven some cool cars. Do you remember f- friends with parents with kind of interest in vehicles growing up? Anything kind of envious on the school run? Um, I don't remember being envious of anything. I remember. Like I said, because we, ha- we had horses and things. So I used to go to pony club and we used to go to point to point and horse racing and things like that. My mum and dad actually come from a horse racing background. Okay. And I remember lots of people having Range Rovers with the split tailgates. Yeah. Uh, you know, you arrive at these various places and you pull one part down, sit on it. There'd be a picnic in the back. And that was really cool. I always liked the idea of that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I always liked my dad's cars. So 
before he had the the BMW, he had, I don't remember this, it was a Peugeot MI16. Yeah, 405, wasn't it? Yeah. Saloon, yeah. That was in like a dark grey colour before everyone's cars were dark grey. And yeah, he had that before the Bimmer. Um, and that was really cool. Uh, so no, I didn't didn't really have any car envy because you know, my, my dad's always been super cool. So Are there any cars from his past that you sort of really like or sort of thought, oh, I want to get one of those when I'm, when I'm old enough or in the future? So he learned to drive in a Mini, mm. a proper Mini, like um, lots of our parents did. So I'd, I'd love to have uh, an old school Mini one day, mm-hmm. just to have as a little toy, because there's so much fun to drive. Uh, mm. So, yeah, I definitely. I remember he had a Hillman Imp as well, which he said was dreadful. <laughs> and he regrets buying it every day because, you know, there's so many things that went wrong with it. Um, but what else did he have that was, again, like the E36? I'd have that back. Mm. Do you remember what engine it had in it? I think. How many exhausts? <laughs> I, I don't remember. <laughs> so I wouldn't have been paying attention to that element of it. It was all about the way it looked. Yeah. yeah. What colour was it? It was um, like a mid-grey colour metallic. It was really nice. I think it was a 325. Nice. Was it a coupe or a four-door? It was a four-door, I think. Um, yeah, my memory is pretty bad. I've actually got a photo of it somewhere. I should have double checked, shouldn't I? See, in my head, it was a two door because that's way cooler. <laughs> but I think it may have been slightly more practical, and it may have been a four door. But yeah, don't quote me on that because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> any um, any music which your dad would listen to while you're kind of out and about in the car? Yeah, so dad's also responsible for my absolute obsession with music. I love music. There's not a minute goes by in the day where I've not got music playing. Uh, he's a big Rolling Stones fan. Oh, cool. And when I think I was 23, he got us a ticket and we went, sorry, my dogs are barking in the background. That will happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to see the Rolling Stones at um, Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, which was awesome. Oh, wow. Really cool. We had matching T-shirts and everything. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of Rolling Stones. Rock and roll, like proper rock and roll. Yeah. Quite a lot of 60s, 70s, a little bit 50s sometimes. And so, you know, I've grown up with a really broad sort of start with music because he listens to sort of lots and really, really good stuff. Mm. I mean, I've got so many playlists. So I, I used to make him mix CDs and mixtapes. And then when technology advanced and that wasn't as easy to do anymore, um, my sister and I got him his own Spotify. And so now we can make him playlists and we send them to him, but we can still do that. And yeah, there'll be anything on those playlists from sort of 90s indie to David Bowie to the Kinks, the Beatles, obviously Rolling Stones. Um, but yeah, really good stuff. You know, modern stuff as well. He'll be like, oh, have you heard this band? And, you know, he listens to stuff I haven't heard of. So yeah, it's uh, lots of music and lots of cars uh, throughout my life. So it's pretty cool. It's funny how it can kind of, funny enough, I found a, a mix cassette that I'd made for my dad years ago and it was Oasis on one side and I can't remember who the other side was, but he obviously liked like what your dad, like, you know, Stones, Beatles, all that sort of stuff. And then by the time it sort of evolves into Oasis and stuff, that's kind of when like the young pass it on to them, isn't it? And yeah, it's just funny how it kind of goes full circle. Yeah, well, I think probably one of the best memories of my life actually is um, not last year, year before, uh, I took my dad, my stepmom, um, and my partner. We went to go and see Noel and his high flying birds in um, in Wales because my dad lives back in Wales and I'm lucky enough to know uh, Taka and Grant from Feeder mm-hmm. and they were supporting Noel and so we had artist passes which was brilliant because I always buy tickets I always support them but if they can get me a pass that is just you know added bonus and we actually met Noel wow. um you know he was he was really really kind to my dad and it was just so nice to meet your heroes and you know they're actually better than you thought they were going to be and mm. we watched from the side of the stage we watched Noel play live that I was just like oh that's a, a good moment to be able to take my dad backstage at an old Gallagher gig yeah yeah you know pay him back for all the cool stuff he's done for me fantastic any road trips you remember as kind of as a kid? Did you go on sort of car-based holidays? Or we... Yeah, we used to drive down to, I'm from Sussex, and we used to drive down to Cornwall quite a lot. 
and I remember always spotting cars on the way. Yeah, yeah. You know, with dad and who was in the car? Just you and your sister and your dad, I guess, or, or maybe your stepmom. Uh, so my sister's quite a bit younger than me. She's my half sister. So um, when we used to go down to Cornwall, that was really back in the day when my mum and dad were still together. So it would have been my dad, my mum, and me driving down to Cornwall, and then we used to also drive to Wales because that's where my dad's family are from. And again, always spotting cars. Um, where in Sussex were you? That's where I am. Oh, are you? That's where I was. So you know, I went to school at Stenning. Do you know Stenning? Okay. I'm in Worthing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Brighton was our place to play. And yeah, I was uh, went to school in Stenning and lived in kind of like Storrington, Washington, Fakenhill Hill area. Yeah. Oh, cool. Whereabouts are you? I'm in Worthing. I can see the A27 out my window. Oh, amazing. So, and I'm probably 10 minutes from Stenning Bypass. And that makes sense, obviously, with Kelly's down south as well, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. It's always nice to, yeah, when someone's from round this way. So mm. Yeah. I was down there last week actually with my friend and we went down to Sussex. Uh, I had um this really cool uh, a Genesis G V eighty. Okay. I borrowed it from Genesis and I was just you know, I'm a bit anti not anti new cars, but I'm just so used to driving older cars. You know, Mike Daly's 25 years old now. Who are Genesis? Obviously, apart from Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are Genesis? Are they kind of the side project of Mitsubishi or something, something like that? Are they standalone? No, no, they're a standalone Korean manufacturer. I'd never heard of them until a few years ago. And I met someone who worked for them at the Max Power Show. Oh, okay. Yeah, just randomly. And so I borrowed a uh, GV70 and then I've just had a GV80. And they're, they're big four by fours. But, you know, oh, I was just like, oh, I'm not going to love it. It's not going to have any personality. But I absolutely loved it. So, yeah, we went on a road trip down south in one of their cars, which was awesome. Are we talking like electric? Yeah, I was going to say electric hybrid or... No, petrol. Oh, OK. Keeping it real with petrol, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you publicly give your opinion on the EV? Oh, yeah, I always do, yeah. I don't think it's the future. I think it's an alternative in the fact that, you know, it's a different type of vehicle so you can get a diesel vehicle you can get a petrol vehicle you can get an electric vehicle and it performs differently but it's definitely not the answer with regards to environmental factors and i don't think the um you know setup's not there the setup will never be there no for what they're sort of predicting electric cars should do i actually think hydrogen and sort of alternative fuels are a better way to go and i've always said that that I'm not an EV fan. That's a bit of an ongoing theme, isn't it, Andy, among a good handful of people we've had on have said a similar sort of thing and also mentioned hydrogen as well as a, an alternative option. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people early on were too scared to say, but I know I'm a bit of a gobshite, so I'm, I just say what I think. <laughs> I wouldn't want to drive an EV at all. Mm. That's fair enough. And yeah, respect your honesty. Obviously, some people would have to kind of protect their uh, career in motoring journalism or whatever, wouldn't they? And sit on a fence. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm an artist, so I can get away with more. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems to me I've never been involved personally in an EV, but like the infrastructure to to run it, and like say you were doing a, a Cornwall or Devon trip from Sussex, that would be a major headache on paper to me. I don't know, maybe you can do it quite smoothly, but to me it seems like it could go badly wrong. You know, with charging points and range and all that sort of stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I think it is achievable, but you have to completely change the way you drive mm. and the way you sort of approach journeys because you plan and things like that i think you know from people i've spoken to sort of the shorter journeys uh commuting in the city things like that they're pretty good mm. where they go charging point to charging point but you know people i've spoken to who have gone on long journeys it's not the most efficient way to do anything it's a bit like yeah going camping with a mobile phone isn't it really like you know you're going to get a day out of it yeah but Actually, if you're going to Glastonbury for the weekend, somewhere you're going to have to charge your phone. Mm. And similar with that, isn't it? Like if you're going on a, that long journey, somewhere you're going to have to stop for a big lunch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what if the charge is broken as well when you get there? And Yeah. yeah they need to have pedals as an override. Yeah. yeah. Flintstone. A Flintstone flap. But like an opposite to the James Bond sort of opening roof, wouldn't you? Have it on the yeah. floor instead. <laughs> Stick your feet down. <laughs> Imagine that in like toy shops, all the kids playing with those. Look, I've got this EV and it's got a Fred stone for it. I mean, just put your fingers through. It's like one of them finger skateboards. <laughs> You'll be onto something there. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll add that to the list on the My Dad's Car franchise. Yeah, yeah. The ever growing list. Um, any smells of note from your parents' vehicles? Oh, my God. So, yes, I get migraines quite easily. And do you remember those god awful 
air fresheners that look like traffic lights, <laughs> mm. a plastic gem in the middle of them, and they just smelt horrendous. I think if I smelt one now, I'd be taken back to being car sick when I was a child. But yeah, it would just give me an instant migraine. I think they're quite sought after now, aren't they, Andy? They're quite a sort of genuine, like vintage thing. For We had a guest, didn't we, on that had an old Merc and he sourced one. Yeah, it was close to 40 quid, I think. Oh my God. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I think the trick is, is when you pierce it, you don't cut it open fully, don't you? You're supposed to sort of prise it open quite carefully. Probably like a magic tree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were quite overpowering though, weren't they? Mm. Sort of, oh, the old-fashioned air freshener. I always try and tuck one under a car mat or something to <laughs> dilute the smell rather than... Um... Yeah. Oh, no. I get car sick. If I'm not sitting in the front and I can see out, out the front window, I get really car sick. And just for some reason, that smell... As soon as like that smell, I just start to get motion sickness, even if I'm not even in a car. Yeah, yeah. I think someone's said before about sometimes some of the plastics in the older cars, when they used to heat up, yeah. there's a smell with those that used to kind of trigger a, a vomit incident. <laughs> yeah. And I remember being driven sort of in relatives or, or friends of the family who would smoke. My parents didn't smoke, but there was people who did. They'd smoke in the car but the windows would be up mm. and they just have like the air on the side. I mean, I don't know what they thought I was going to do, but that was awful. Yeah. I sampled that. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing that I'm six foot four, to be honest. I'm surprised I didn't sort of stop growing at five <laughs> foot or something. Um, do you recall your dad selling cars? Do you know what sort of became of like the MI16 or the or the BMW? And where was he buying them? Was he a free ads man or a Ooh, good question? Uh... Postcard in a shop window dealership i think he i remember him auto trader mm. was always something he'd look at and i'm pretty sure that's where he used to advertise any cars that he sold as well yeah i think he he would have bought some stuff from the dealership because he drives a mercedes now i cannot remember i'm not very good with modern cars so i don't know what model it is but he got that from a dealership and he had um a mitsubishi l200 as a work vehicle and that was from a dealership so he's kind of done a bit of both mm. yeah the auto trader thing actually takes me back i remember my dad was in the trade he was a an upholsterer a coach trimmer but he'd sort of dabbled in classic bikes and cars and stuff on the side i remember he used to have the auto trader guy come round like on a friday or something and take the photos so like if he had some ads to place this guy would turn up with a camera to take the pictures that must have been kind of only mid 90s probably yeah wow is it completely gone now, the uh, physical edition of Auto Trader? I assume it must be, isn't it? Yes, so. I don't know whether you can still buy a copy of it. I don't know. I wonder. I wonder. I feel like I should Google that because it's kind of a shame, isn't it? I know like all magazines and everything are sort of fading out, but it is a shame that that's happening. Mm. I'm assuming it has gone because the nature of the modern ways of everything that's digitalised, things just go quick, don't they? It's out of date as soon as you print. Yeah. You phone up. Is it still there? No, it's gone three days ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? There's something nice, though, wasn't there, about flicking through an old copy of Auto Trader back in the day and, like, you know, well, everyone used to do it, didn't they? You set your budget of whatever it was and find stuff that's, you know, weird or just outside it. Yeah, definitely. It's like, It was like, you know, going back in time to, like we were saying about making mixtapes and things like that, there's something, yeah. you know, it was quite nice that you did actually have to take time to look for a car and, go see it and you know do all the things and and the same with mixtapes you take the time to do stuff and i think everything now is very instantaneous mm. and yeah just lose a little bit kind of i guess there's still those kind of magazines for older vehicles isn't there but like you say modern vehicles the people that are buying them they're probably just not they're not going to entertain that sort of entry into looking for a car now are they yeah true true i think if you're pedaling like a traction engine or something like that you can probably put it in that kind of monthly mm-hmm. publication. And uh, <laughs> so we've come up with this concept the other day and um, sort of taking influence from Twitter and going back to sort of how things were that um, we thought maybe we should have a digital version of like the old classified ads where you only have like 30 words and you have to use all the kind of the FSH full service history. You can only have a black and white picture. One picture. We were thinking we might call it part X as a nod towards X now being Twitter. I like that very much. And it's kind of almost nothing against them, but kind of the sort of polar opposite of the collecting cars, which is like the shiny, polished, <laughs> sort of hypercar walk around video narrated by Chris Harris type. 
thing and on the other end you've got this sort of really grotty website with <laughs> <laughs> Which is made up of acronyms in order to get in your thirty word limit. Yeah, and you have to phone. Yeah, you have to phone, and you have to sit there for a minute to work out what some of the acronyms actually mean. Preferably a, a landline phone number as well. I'd say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> would be nice. And you can only call after six. Yeah, <laughs> but not after eight. <laughs> the dinner time window. That's it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's too late. Like casualties on or heartbeat or something. Yeah. Oh, that's a brilliant idea so, i remember I, um i met an old friend of my dad's ages ago this was um he still knew like my auntie or something and he said that when they used to want to go and arrange to go down the pub because of the price of phone calls they used to do like a two or three ring thing so one of them would call each other not answer it but he'd hang up after three rings and then they'd know to go to the pub that night basically it's a very clever system isn't it yeah we used to have that as the got home safe. Like if you'd done a long journey from a relative, <laughs> that was like, oh yeah, just give us three rings when you get home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, amazing. But yeah, I've not heard it referred to trips to the pub. No. <laughs> Far more resourceful. <laughs> Any excuse. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You, you just you arrange with your friends to be somewhere. You would just be there, wouldn't you? You know, there's mm. no if you were late, everyone had already gone, or you know, you, you were just late. That's kind of, I guess, timekeeping was a bit more important then. It's a mad concept, isn't it, to explain to a kid, you know, we didn't have the means to communicate with each other. We just had to turn up and (laughs) actually hope that that friend would keep their word and be there. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anything else we needed to ask you with regards to uh, cars from your childhood? Teachers, perhaps, have got vehicles of interest? This is the time to get it off your chest, Helen, if you've got anything that's sort of... No, no, no teachers. Um... It's just, I mean, it really is, you know, it was dad. Dad had the cool cars and dad is where I got all my love for cars and my love for music from. So, yeah. Did you go to car shows with him? Did you kind of get that far into it? Yeah, yeah, we did. We used to. Um, We'd go to like local ones. And then since I sort of got into customising cars before Goblin started and then when Goblin was on, yeah, we go to, you know, lots of lots of car shows together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice going to car shows with Dad. Mm. But then also I do live music with Dad as well. So if there's a car show with live music, that's even better. <laughs> do you think he had a particular influence with regards to cars at all? Do you have any idea why he was kind of into it? Um, I think his dad liked cars a lot. Mm. So my granddad, he was into cars and motorbikes as well. My dad had motorbikes when he was a lot younger. So, yeah, that was definitely from granddad. Yeah. So it just seems to be passed down. It's definitely in the blood. Nice. I was going to ask, actually, is um, so given the things you've done, anyone in particular you think we ought to speak to who's got a really interesting story along these lines? Paul Cowland. Have you spoken to him before? I've messaged him. Yeah, I have spoken to him with regards to coming on. I think his dad owned a car dealership. Is that right? Yeah. Paul has got so many good stories relating to cars. So I definitely recommend talking to him. And and also his car history is quite unusual and he likes quite unusual things. So, yeah, Paul Cowland, definitely. Cool. I'll chase him up and try and make it happen. We'll say Helen says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Helen. Well, um, thank you very much for uh, yeah, sparing a bit of time for us and uh, sharing your memories. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, guys. Thank you for inviting me on. It's lovely to talk to you. Yeah, nice to meet you. You too. See you later. Cool. That was good fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Short and sweet. Yeah, not really sort of in depth, mm. but yeah, some nice memories there with obviously her dad's cars. I guess the E36 sounds like that's sort of the pivotal vehicle. Yeah. And um, especially back then, I guess it would have been near to new, wouldn't it? So mm. yeah, a bit special. And nice music memories as well, I guess. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, similar ages, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Father's being into Stones, that kind of rock stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen the Stones live. Obviously, they're still going, but um, yeah, you kind of think they get to a point where you're like, and they just sort of rolling them out just for... Went to see The Who in probably like mid to late 2000s. Okay. Similar sort of thing, aren't they? But yeah, that that was kind of one to tick off back in the day. Any good? Very good, yeah. It was at Bewley, funnily enough, keeping the uh, the car link. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it was very loud. I remember it being very loud. <laughs> <laughs> that was good all these old people with their loud music yeah funny enough it was a friend of mine it was his dad that took us i guess it's one of those things that he probably wanted to go to yeah um thought ah oh, take the kids along as well why not <laughs> that's sort of an educational type thing though isn't it like in a similar way that if you had the opportunity to buy tickets for oasis or 
the verb or whatever, mm. you might go, actually, yeah, I might take the kids along. Yeah. Like, and just give them an experience of the music from your your youth. Yeah. Yeah, not a bad gig. No, it's good. Um, yeah, it makes you wonder how much longer you're going to have left to see the Stones, isn't it, really? It can't keep going on, can it? No, they're all uh, defying the... Uh, laws of whatever it might be three piece now as well aren't they actually yes i think so well i assume there is a standing drummer otherwise it's going to be very uh... it's all very acoustic <laughs> very quiet <laughs> um but yeah back on to, to helen's stuff I've, I've listened to a few of her podcasts actually they've been quite interesting they did one all on um on the essex boys murders mm-hmm. which there was a film and a documentary and stuff made about it about the range Rover. and um yeah quite interesting to hear about it from that sort of side i think the car's been restored i think yeah i think it went into auction not that long ago and yeah for an insane amount um yeah i don't know whether you would you want that car (laughs) well that's the thing isn't it i I think um there's loads of different films isn't there and documentaries on the subject i believe in one of the films one of the franchises i think they actually use the exact car in one scene okay um film stuff in it which i'm sure was very sort of strange to sit in yeah a lot in character of the people that that met a sad demise yeah just climb into these seats they've got holes in the headrests yeah exactly just 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 stop breathing for a minute we're just going to put some ketchup on your face yeah is that red wine on the seat there no it's not yeah no i wouldn't fancy getting in that to be honest no not even with it being restored but uh each to their own yeah exactly but no definitely go and check out helen's artwork as well that's really special stuff yeah it's cool isn't it yeah really good uh, good to get helen's endorsement on the um part x classified idea yeah yeah i assume you've copyrighted that have you and she might run off with that and <laughs> I, no i haven't yeah I, um i looked up the domains the other day which um i think someone understandably has got part x.com.co.uk mm. and i've got too many things on to be creating a classifieds website but I think um, it's a, it's a fun talking point, isn't it? I think so. If it yeah, never, yeah. never gets off the ground, yeah. and yeah, just a, I suppose a memory of uh, how those things used to be done. Mm. But yeah, good to get Helen on, and yeah, nice to speak to her. You see her on kind of Instagram, liking stuff that we've put up, so she is kind of actually following what we're doing rather than just um, sort of agreeing to come on and having nothing to do with it. So yeah, no, that's really kind. It's massive help, isn't it? This well, for the likes of us at this stage of where things are things like that do do go a long way yeah absolutely so um, yeah very grateful for that yeah um oh we should we should do a, a thanks to steve who bought us some coffees didn't he after we had him on he was on the last episode which we've gone out so um yeah thank you very much steve thanks steve okie dokie with that in mind then we'll uh, wrap it up cheers mate see you later roll the credits thank you for listening to my dad's cart i hope you enjoyed the show please support us Buy a coffee and subscribe and tell all your friends.